Hi everyone, welcome to our channel, Rebecca, Stu, and the crew. I am Rebecca, and today we have a really fun fall DIY for you guys. Today we are going to be making the Great Pumpkin Halloween display using items from the Dollar Tree. So let's get crafty. Today for the supplies, we'll break them up into parts. So for part one, today we are going to be using these craft or cake decorating tools in a dowel rod or some kind of a rolling pin and some air dry clay from Dollar Tree. So now what we're going to do is roll out the clay into small pumpkins of different sizes and shapes. You're going to use the tools that I just showed to cut grooves into the sides of the pumpkins and then leave them out to air dry for 24 to 48 hours, depending on the size of your pumpkins and the humidity where you live. So mine took about 36 hours to completely dry. So this is on day one. And then on day two, you'll start to see them getting a lot lighter in color and a lot more firm. But you can see how I cut the grooves into the sides of the pumpkins. I rolled out some vines and stems for the top and just added those with a little bit of water to help them to stick together. And as you can see, I did a bunch of different sizes. So for part two, the supplies we'll need while those pumpkins are drying are a birdhouse, some craft sticks of two different sizes, hot glue and scissors, and then some paint brushes, paint of a bunch of different colors, for whatever you'll need for your project. And then we'll need something to cut out this dowel, dowel rod from the um, birdhouse. So I just use some dog nail clippers to do that. You'll need to cut that out or do something to get rid of it. Now what we're going to do is we are going to start painting the birdhouse. This is going to be Snoopy's doghouse while we're finished. So the reason we're painting it, even though we're going to cover it, is because we're going to be covering it in uh, the craft sticks or popsicle sticks, and they're not exactly the size that we need. And by putting on that paneling, you're probably going to be able to see part of the birdhouse underneath, and we didn't want you to be able to see it super easy. I wanted to make it a little bit more difficult, so I figured the best thing to do would be to cover it in some red paint, and it's not going to show through that natural wood color when we put the whole thing together. So we want to paint the top underneath of the roof, um, those eaves there, the sides, and the base. Then we'll set that aside to dry. Obviously, our pumpkins are dry now. We made these about two days ago. You can see the different color when they're dry, how they get a lot more um, lighter in color, kind of like a light tan. And then we can go ahead and start painting our stems, vines, and the pumpkins. And I start with a small detail brush from Dollar Tree. We go over the vines. I paint some of them brown, some of them green. And then for the pumpkins, we're going to do a bright orange. We also have one called Harvest Orange um, color. And we're just going to do a solid color on the outside of the pumpkin to start. And then once we have all of the pumpkins painted um, a solid color, then we'll go in with darker oranges and brown to add more detail to the pumpkin. So I have some darker orange here. I end up adding a little bit of brown to this dark orange also to add the varying details of the pumpkins. And then taking your detail brush, you're going to want to really pay attention to those grooves that you cut into your pumpkins and kind of darken those up a little bit with the darker paint. And that's going to help really make your pumpkins have that 3D look, a very realistic appearance. And, you know, make sure you vary the color on your pumpkin just by brushing on the darker colors and highlights where you need them. So here are our pumpkins completely finished. And we're going to let that paint dry for a little while and work on the doghouse. So now that the whole thing is dry with the first coat of red paint, we're going to take these craft sticks, the small ones to start, and we're going to work on the roof. So we're just going to put a little bead of glue for each piece and then glue on one craft stick because Snoopy's house has all of these wood pieces together that make up his doghouse. It's not just a solid roof or a solid side. He's got all of these small boards making the doghouse all together. So we're just going to keep working in this fashion all the way to the top. Now when I get to the top, the craft sticks don't fit perfectly and you can still see a little portion of the very top of the doghouse or birdhouse here and that's okay because it's painted red 
And once this whole thing is painted red with the craft sticks, it's just going to add that much more detail. So once the glue is dry, you want to take a pair of scissors, not your best pair, but a sharp pair, and you want to cut the ends off of the craft sticks to get your roof this nice smooth edge. So here's the first side done. We'll do the exact same thing to the opposite side. Just make sure that you take that first craft stick and line it up exactly with that bottom edge. If you do that, the size of the craft sticks at Dollar Tree sells, you should be able to get six of the small craft sticks up the side of each um, roof piece. And that will leave the same size um, open spot at the very top of the roof and kind of make it look more uniform. Then go ahead and trim off the excess wood with your scissors. Just make sure the glue is dry all the way so you're not popping them off of the side on accident. And now we can start working on this side. So the very top portion of the birdhouse, I just take these three large craft sticks and I start drawing at an angle where the roof will be. And these are going to overlap just a little bit. We'll need a small piece for the very top and then two more pieces of the angled craft sticks to create the whole top portion of the birdhouse um, to turn it into the doghouse, obviously covering up that hole in the front. So um, if you are worried about cutting it too small, I always tend to cut mine a little bit larger than necessary and trim off small pieces as I go to make sure that I have the exact right size to fit up into the top of the house here. Um, it's always easier to take off a little bit more than obviously having to measure again and cut a whole new piece. And these three pieces at the top are going to overlap so they fit um, properly. Now, once we've got the sizing worked out for the first side, use those as your template for the second side. So just trace those on the craft sticks and cut those with your scissors so that you'll have the same sizes and easily ready to slap on the back when you're ready to put the whole thing together. So now just using some hot glue, we put the top one on first, then the second piece we overlap just a little bit so it fits on the roof. And the third piece, because they're overlapped, it kind of slides under that second piece and creates that layered look. Then we take our craft sticks and we just measure for the sides and we're going to need three more pieces to cover the side. The very bottom one overlaps just a teeny tiny little bit um, on the one above it, but that's okay because once we paint this and add some shadows with the lines between the boards, you won't be able to tell and it actually looks like it's on purpose. So then of course we've already measured the wood for the back for the top portion do it the same way and then add our three pieces for the bottom portion and then we'll measure the sides and it's going to take like three more pieces to cover the sides obviously just cut the first one and then use that as your template to cut the rest for both of the sides um, and you can put all the craft sticks together to make sure that they're the same size and just mark it with your pencil and trim off any excess. You get them all the same size for the sides, three on the right and three on the left. It's okay if there's those little spaces that you see where um, they're lifted away from the corners a little bit. Once we put in those details, like I told you before, you're not going to be able to see those. So we're just going to do a fresh coat of red paint on the whole entire doghouse. And it should just take one coat of paint to cover the whole thing. And like I said, we're going to add those details. So um, just make sure that the wood's all covered with a decent amount of paint, but don't put it on too thick so it doesn't take too long to dry. Because once we put on those added details, it's going to darken up portions of this just a little bit. And you really don't need to do too many coats of paint here and take a bunch of time waiting on it to dry. So here it is all painted. We'll let that dry and we'll work on a door. Just take a craft stick and cut it, leave the round top, paint that black and let that dry. While that's drying, we're going to take that detail brush and add just a tiny little bit of black paint to your brush and start painting the grooves between each of the boards. 
If you want to, you can take your finger and smudge the lines just a little bit also. And I take some hot glue. We're just going to glue our door onto the front of the doghouse. Then add your black lines to the roof and the sides and the back. And again, you're using just a very small amount of paint. Um, you even want to, once you dip it in the paint, wipe some of it off on your paper so that you don't have too much. You want it kind of like a, a staggered line. You don't want a complete, thick, solid black line all the way across. You just want kind of like a faded line as it goes across to give it that look of like an aged kind of board on your house. You could even use a paper towel or your finger to smudge the line out a little bit. That helps give it that aged look also. And here's what it looks like with all of the pieces on. And I added a little bit of white around the top of the door just to add some more detail and shadow. Then I cut a craft stick, real small. I wrote the word Snoopy on it with a pencil and then I painted over it with some light tan paint that I would be able to see through um, just so that I would know where to use um, my Sharpie marker later to write the word Snoopy on top. I want to be able to see the writing, make sure all the letters fit. So now for part three, we're going to need some dark green paint. We're also going to use a paintbrush, obviously, and a pencil. We're gonna need some hot glue and some scissors. And then one of these desk drawer organizers from Dollar Tree, some greenery. And then we'll need these miniature stone walkways and fences and some rub-on transfers. Also one of these little building block games I used, just four pieces to make a sign and some craft sticks. And then for the wood box here, the first thing we're going to do is put our doghouse in the corner and then mark where it's going to sit. This will help us mark off where our walkway is going to go. And I picked this walkway up around Christmas time last year by the miniatures, um, but you can find these at Hobby Lobby for about the same price if you don't have one on hand. So I'm just marking a walkway and how long I need it to be. And then taking my scissors, I just created a like wavy pattern walkway that I'm going to use to glue on the base. So that will be the walkway across the yard to the doghouse. So once I figure out the spacing, I actually cut it a little bit too short. So then I cut a small piece of the walkway and put it right in the front of the door where the doghouse will go. And that helps me know exactly where the doghouse will go once I glue it on. So it actually kind of worked out in my favor. And we're going to paint the whole um, base green. Obviously this is upside down and then we'll paint the edges also. Just make sure you don't cover up the walkway. And I just did one coat of green paint, even if you can see through it a little bit, that's okay. Cause we're going to add those green leaves all over the base once we get the paint dry and the other pieces on. So I'm just kind of smoothing out the paint. And then we'll go ahead and glue on our walkway now that the base has dried. As you can see, that little piece of stone that I glued on to begin with really helped me line the whole thing up. And my small craft stick is dry now, so I can go ahead and use my Sharpie to write the word Snoopy. And I do four little dots in the corners to look like nails. And we'll glue that on the front of the doghouse with some hot glue. And now the house is complete. Then we'll go ahead and glue the dog house in the corner. This is why we marked it off. This really helps us to work out our spacing. There's our dog house. You see the white line around the door helps add some detail. 
not taking these um, wood rub-on transfers and some craft sticks. We're going to make the sign for the pumpkin patch. So I really wanted this aged look to the wood to make it look like an older style pumpkin patch. And that's where the wood transfers or rub-on transfers are coming into play. If you don't have the rub-on transfers, you can just paint these gray and white to give it kind of like an aged look or just leave it as is. It's really up to you. This was just an added step that I took to give it the look that I wanted for my sign. So we're going to actually use the transfer all the way around the craft stick because we're going to be able to see it from all directions. So I completely cover it on both sides. And we'll need two of these craft sticks to go, obviously one on each side of the sign. Then I had those pieces to the um, little puzzle game that I just had on hand. I'm using those as my sign pieces and I am using four of them. Two of them I turned the opposite direction to make them look like they had nails in the corners, which I thought was kind of fun. And I just kind of put the rub on transfer in all different directions on the wood sign. And this made it look a lot more aged and um, like the wood was kind of falling apart, which is what I really wanted. And then we're going to go ahead and glue those craft sticks to each side with some hot glue, making sure they're the same height. And then take another craft stick and we're going to paint that a light tan, a little bit of white and a little bit of um, some dry brush strokes of brown paint, just a tiny little bit of brown to give it a wood grain look, a little bit darker than what was originally on the craft stick. Um, so it looked more like an older sign. So just use a dry brush to paint on a little bit of dark brown. And we'll let that dry. And then once it is dry, you can go ahead and write pumpkin patch on the sign. I'm doing four um, dots in the corners again to make it look like nails. And then we'll just glue this on with some hot glue. And I just used a Sharpie to write the word pumpkin patch. And you want it to look kind of handwritten. Now for part four. We're going to use a sticker or two stickers to create a sign. We'll need a Sharpie marker. We'll need a craft stick. We're also going to need some colored pencils and then a dowel rod. We'll need some cardstock and a printout of the great pumpkin characters. We'll need some self laminating sheets and some foliage leaves. So I just cut these to little tiny pieces and I start gluing them on. I really focus on doing around the walkway first. I'm just doing small pieces and making sure that the leaves don't cover the walkway. So you want it pretty close and kind of at the angle. As you can see, I curve them and then glue them into the right shape. And that way they're really, really close to the walkway, but not covering it. And just work slow. Take your time and really position each one so that it looks really nice next to the walkway. And then once we have them all on the walkway, we'll start gluing these onto the base. And just be mindful that you still have to add your pumpkins. You don't want to cover it too much. Leave enough of the leaves loose. Like you can add like glue to one part, but don't completely glue it down. You want some of the leaves to stick up and you want to be able to move parts of them over a little bit to be able to put your pumpkins kind of under them with the leaves around them and not just the pumpkin sitting like right on top of them, if that makes sense. So I kind of like add some glue to the pumpkin and then I move the leaves over and glue the pumpkins to the wood base. And then the leaves just kind of pop up around it and make them look like um, the leaves are just overgrown. And you'll want one pumpkin on the other walkway side of the walkway so that they just look like they're kind of all over the base. They're not just all concentrated to one side. Now we'll glue our fence pieces on. 
So I had two packs of the fence pieces from Dollar Tree. I found if you use the gate, it will fit perfectly all the way around with that open space in the front of the walkway for the great pumpkin sign that we made. And it was the perfect fit. Then I took some more of the leaves and I glue those all the way around the base except for um, the walkway. I left that open, but I just kept gluing small pieces. I made them look like they were growing through the fence. And then I added the sign just by gluing that in place. And I held it up until the glue dried. As you can see, I've got my leaves covering the sides and the whole entire base. And then I took this um, wired vine that I had on hand. If you don't have this, you can also use some berry garland. And I just wrapped that up around the pumpkin patch sign. I had this last year from Dollar Tree. Sometimes they sell them with lights on them. So now we'll take that printout from the internet. I just Googled the great pumpkin and then I printed this out on cardstock. I just kept playing with the size until I got it about the size that I thought would look right behind the pumpkins. At first I cut them out with the pumpkin, but that didn't make any sense. So I was like, I gotta cut these pumpkins off because I'm putting them behind the pumpkins that we made. So we just have the tops of them and we're going to be able to see the back of them. So I'm taking some colored pencils and just coloring them in. Um, to match the front and obviously these are the backs of their heads so you won't see their faces so I just did her curly hair she has a pink dress on in the picture so I added the dots in the pink outfit and then he was wearing a blue shirt so I just did those from the back and then we'll take those self laminating sheets and put the um, characters between the sheets and then just trim around the laminating sheet as close as you can get it and this will just help them to stand up and not be affected by humidity. Then take some more of those vines and glue them all over the back where you can just see their heads a little bit. And this is going to help us glue these to the pumpkins that are there and hide the fact that we didn't do their whole entire body because obviously they're you know covered by all the leaves in the pumpkin patch. It's very overgrown waiting for that great pumpkin. So this really helps hide the fact that we don't have the whole bodies printed out and designed here. So then you'll just take your characters and you are going to glue them to whichever pumpkin you want in your patch and make sure that it looks like they're leaning on the pumpkins. And then the last part was creating the sign that Linus holds. a view of the back there's some close-up pictures you guys can see what it looks like so far And then we'll, we'll make the sign. So we're just going to take these um, stickers from Dollar Tree. We'll need two of them. And a dowel rod or a wooden skewer. I'm going to use it as one of those like bamboo skewers that they sell at Dollar Tree. And I just write, welcome, great pumpkin on the sticker. And again, you want it to look handwritten. And then we just glue or stick these two stickers together with the dowel rod in the center. Then I cut the ends of the sign and then I ended up drawing kind of like a wavy line on the sides to make it look like um, a wood pallet sign and some fake wood grain. And then just kind of trimmed around that and cut the um, post down and then glue that to a pumpkin where it looks like he's holding it in his hand. And then that is it. So here's all the different angles of our display. I love this so much. It turned out so cute. I was thrilled with how it turned out. It's going to be a really fun display to put out this year for Halloween. And this is always a favorite childhood memory. I remember watching this when I was a child. I still watch it to this day with my children, even though they're mostly grown. They appease me each year and will watch The Great Pumpkin 
when it comes on around Halloween time, which is always so fun. So I hope you guys enjoyed learning how to make this using all of these items from the Dollar Tree. I had a lot of fun making this today. I know the fence and the walkway may be hard to find right now at Dollar Tree, but you can pick them up at Hobby Lobby. They do have them for a reasonable price. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe if you haven't done so already. And here are some other videos from our channel you might also enjoy. Have a great day, everyone.